industry overall has been really uh, very exciting. So let's, we're going to pause and pray. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you that you're always uh, looking for people throughout the earth, Lord God, through, to whom uh, that they would find that you would find them faithful, that you would find them committed, that you would find them obedient, uh, uh, fully in love with you, Lord God. And out of that love, out of that outpouring of love for you, uh, that that people, Lord God, would be found obedient. They would be found um, uh, looking to obey you, to follow you, Lord God, and looking to live selflessly for for selflessly for you, Lord God. And so I. You're still uh, searching the earth for, for people that would be devoted. They'd be intentional in seeking your face. Intentional in seeking your face. And uh, so, Lord God, I pray that, that we can be uh, that people that would continue to, to be led by your Spirit, empowered by your Holy Spirit, and uh, also directed by your Word. Your Word is true. Your Word is our compass. Your Word is our direction. And, uh, Lord God, we want to continue to honor you. And uh, uh, we just look forward to what you're going to do this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about prayer. Prayer is always, uh, you can never uh, uh, under, understate or uh, uh, underscore how important it is for uh, people of God to be, to be praying. To be praying, to be seeking His face. And, um, and so we want to encourage you with some testimonies, but also uh, straight out of God's Word. Uh, I'm going to share a verse in just a moment, but it says, uh, God shared with me, this is, this is just something that we know, but the prayer is, is not only talking to God, but it's also listening, and it's hearing from God. It's a conversation. It's not a one-way monologue, but rather it's a two-way dialogue. And um, years ago, uh, this is some, maybe sound very simple to us, but it's, it really... It really taught me a lot of things in my prayer life and my devotional life is it is really important to ask God questions. Ask God questions. It sounds really simple, but it's also really important. Because we can get, I could get into this um, uh, frame of mind where it's almost like a fire hydrant. We're just, we're just, which, and we're just uh, telling God things, which, which we do. We want to adore God. We want to, we want to thank God. We want to praise God. And just come before His presence with thanksgiving. But also, we want to have that, that two-way conversation. I um, heard somebody recently say, it's like uh, you're playing tennis, you hit, but you don't just hit, but you also receive. You receive as well. And so it's just a really uh, crude, simple analogy, but it's, it's really important to yield and listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us and leading us and guiding us. And so uh, it says here right away in Acts 1, uh, 14, you can read the context coming up to this. It's really important. Uh, why they're together. The early churches together. They're seeking. Uh, they, have, they have directions from Jesus himself to wait. Uh, to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. And so here is in Acts uh, 1.14. It says, These all continued. There's a whole list of people. And uh, it says, These all continued. And so if the word, I love the phrasing of God's word. If it says, They continued, they began. There was a beginning. But it's so important, uh, it's, it's sometimes, I'm just taking a little parenthesis here, sometimes it's, it's, it's so easy sometimes to begin a thing, you know, to begin a project, to, to begin uh, an assignment. Uh, to, we, get, we get excited, the, the, the exciting part is the beginning, right? Man, let's have a prayer, we're going to call a prayer meeting. It's exciting to, to begin, or, or uh, we're going to start a, a painting project or something, and, and you start taping them in, this, it's like, man, sometimes when you, when you go to painting, it's like the easy part's the painting, but you got to prep. you got to do all this painting, you got to do scraping and all these things. And, and so, but you got to, the, there's, there's a beginning. God wants us to, 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 to not only be excited and, and, and about the beginning, but he wants us to be consistent and faithful as we continue. As we continue in our walk with Christ. There's sometimes there's ups, there's downs, there's, there's highs, there's lows, there's valleys, there's mountain peaks. Uh, but he wants us to stay committed and stay continuing. And so, uh, as, as you read through God's Word, reflect and meditate on, uh, on parts, uh, on God's Word. To, the, the, I believe that God will highlight or He'll bring to you. He'll, uh, he'll just, uh, it's almost like this, it's like jumping off the page, certain things. And, and uh, it says, these all, it says they continue. They continued, and so there was a beginning, they're continuing, and even after this, they're continuing. 
uh, because Jesus said to continue until. There's an until. Until something happens. And then later they are endued with that power from on high that I believe that every believer can walk in. They can walk in that power of the Holy Ghost. So Acts 1.14, these all continued with one accord in prayer. So there's unity. Whenever, as much as possible within a ministry, within a church, God wants there to be uh, unity as much as possible. And so they are with one accord, and they're praying. They're seeking the face of God. They're praying. They're petitioning heaven. They're listening from heaven. They're listening from the Lord. And it says supplication. And there's, they're with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. With his brothers. Uh, I'm going to turn really quickly to, I believe it's Luke 11. 11 1. So the disciples, this is going backwards here. The disciples, the original 12 or so, they spent, and more, uh, but there was, uh, the original 12, they spent a lot of time with Jesus. A lot of time with Jesus. And um, I really believe uh, from, from seeing. Uh, it, it's, it's spoken in God's word so many times how Jesus spent time in prayer. It says that he often, uh, I believe it's Mark one thirty nine approximately, that he often withdrew to lonely places to pray. You know, things would get busy, but he would, uh, when get, life gets busy, it's important to withdraw from that and to maybe you got a place by yourself, you got a place, you got a room in your house, you have, maybe you got to get in your car, you got to take a walk in the woods somewhere. Maybe you find a nice trail just to spend time with God in prayer or uh, but it's important to spend time in prayer. I believe that, that, that the, the miracles that Jesus walked in, that the, the divine influence was a direct correlation to the time he spent with God in prayer. <clears throat> the direct correlation. And so I believe that's also a principle for us. The power that we're going to walk in is going to be a direct correlation to the time that we spend in prayer. That we take the time that we're abiding. That talks about that John 15 abiding relationship with Jesus. But in Luke 11... The disciples, I, I believe the disciples are observing, they're watching, they're in this on-the-job training, and they notice this, and they notice what's happening. They're, he's spending time in prayer, and then, and then as a result, uh, he's preaching, he's teaching, the demons are getting cast out, people are getting healed. There's a direction in his life, there's from city to city, but Luke 11, let's look at verse 1. It says, Now it came to pass... As he was praying in a certain place. In a certain place that Jesus was praying, it came to pass. It doesn't say where, but uh, it, there's, there's other places throughout the, throughout the Gospels that it, 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 it does show. Right in the Garden of Gethsemane, he went alone to pray. And then he, he, brought, he invited, there's an invitation that the disciples were invited to pray with Jesus. But uh, they fell asleep. And so they, they were invited to and there's, there's other examples throughout the New Testament that Jesus withdrew. He withdrew to when he made these super important decisions. But uh, the 12 that he would pick, he withdrew. He spent the whole night in prayer. It's important be because he wanted to pick and he wanted to finally choose the right 12 that would spend time with him in this ministry that he would have. And so prayer is so important. And so it, it says here in a, that he was praying in a certain place. And when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, check out this question, that uh, they, they, get to, they were with the, Jesus so often, and they get to ask him firsthand so many questions. And this is another question that he asked him, and this is another principle that I shared earlier, is that God wants us to ask questions, and then wait for the response. <laughs> and it's it, may, it may be with an impression, it may be with a thought that's not your own, and so that's hearing the voice of God. But it says, the disciples said to him, Lord... And so I love the use, so I'm kind of breaking things down as I go, but it says Lord. That means Supreme Master. It means, and it just means more than teacher, but it, it says Lord. It says, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And so it says, teach us to pray. If there's nothing else we can ask God, this is an example for us. We can ask, teach us to pray. And spending time with God in prayer is so, so important. I think that sometimes... Um, when things uh, are going a different way. For example, uh, uh, here's an analogy or a parable for you, for you so to speak. Like say that if you're watching a, 
uh, a football game or a basketball game or something, and uh, and the game didn't go quite as they, as they thought it went. And so they're having an interview with the coaches or something and the players, and the coaches will say something like, uh, well, what happened? <clears throat> he says, we got to go back to the, the fundamentals. Our pad level wasn't good, or, or, or they, they didn't, the receivers uh, didn't watch the ball before they ran. And so they had to go back to the fundamentals, the things that are just basic. And so well, we want to stay with and go back to, but also continue with, the fundamentals of following Jesus. Continue in prayer. Continue in studying God's Word. Continue to be like the Bereans who continued uh, as they heard the Word. They studied it and searched it out to see if it was true. So the fundamentals uh, of the Christian life are so important. A praying church or a praying family, a praying ministry is a powerful church or a powerful family. Uh, uh, a, a husband gets the wife gets, or the kids, uh, gets them together to pray. But also on the flip side, a prayerless church, a powerless church. A prayerless church, powerless. The power of a church, the power of a ministry is found in prayer. And so, um, uh, and I don't remember it was, oh yeah, yeah, I just want to share a testimony from Friday nights. Uh, we just had so many testimonies on uh, <laughs> Friday night. And right before we went to Bemidji, it was August... It was right, right in August, so uh, I was teaching here on a Friday night, and uh, I'll have to look at the teaching notes, but uh, it's like everything that we were, I was teaching about, it's like it happened right on the streets, uh, right over here, and, and so we were walking, and, and as we go, and I, I encourage us and encourage the people uh, uh, that may do this, when you're, when you're going, it's not about, like say, I have to get there, like a destination, unless you're specifically guided to go somewhere, it can be that as well. But as we go on the streets of Tower Avenue or community, we're really praying for the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so we were praying. And then also when we see a believer, we see a Christian, we want to see how can we encourage them, how can we pray for them in their faith. And so here's a uh, picture that we had recently uh, made up. Uh, and so uh, Pastor Ryan Allen, he had pulled up on the, uh, on the other side of Tower Avenue, and uh, he had just told us some things that had happened. They said that we had, we had just got this brand new church. I, think he, I don't even know if he had told too many other people at this time anyway. And so it was just, just something that just brand new happened at that, at that time. And, and we said, can we pray for you? And so this is a, uh, a picture that we have up in the, on the wall now. It's called Power in Prayer. So you guys give it a quick view. Power in Prayer. And uh, this one was amazing because... Uh, what happened that same night, trying to get the story straight, I might get a this there if I uh, help me with the details, but that same night we prayed for Pastor Ron and Redemption Ministries, but then at the same night we came all the way back and then we're kind of getting things ready for the next day. We're loading up the trailer, we're getting ready to go to the Bemidji outreach, and um, up comes another uh, good friend, uh, <coughs> like another good friend, and uh, this good friend was named as uh, James, and... Um, and what happened is, is that he wanted, he saw us and he wanted prayer. And this is that James is a believer, he, and, but, but what happened, him, him and his wife uh, were actually in a motorcycle accident. And so we're praying for James, but also, uh, uh, importantly, as we're praying for his wife, a big friend is Jennifer, to be healed. Uh, continue praying for her, but, but what happened is, so we're praying for, for James, but what happened is, uh, Ron, Pastor Ron, <clears throat> when that motorcycle happened, that accident, he was actually the first one on that scene, somehow, God, God let him there. He was actually the first one on that motorcycle accident scene. And he was praying for them and, and calling the 9-1 and all those ambulances and stuff. So, um, to, to the best of my recollection, that's, that's how that happened. So there's uh, power in prayer. Power in prayer. And then just this past Friday, um, uh, we, had, we had two teams. Uh, uh, we had a team of three with one cross. Uh, we had another team of three with another cross, and so we went out two different directions, and um, and so we uh, one of us we went I think it was on 11th just up here either 11th or 10th, and just outside Mike's bar, and and this small group was kind of uh, had their wall up and kind of defensive at first, and we just kind of listened, and of course Wendy brought the ministry dog Snickers, so they kind of put some of their defenses down, and they started petting and hanging out with the dog. 
And so I started connecting with Josh, and we prayed with him, and, and uh, uh, another gentleman came out named Kevin, and another lady named Donna came out of the bar. Just, he was coming out as we were standing there. And before he knew it, uh, this lady was just hugging on Wendy and just uh, crying on her shoulder. And uh, it's like she was a prodigal, and we're, Wendy was encouraging her to, to come back home. And, and, uh, and so we went around the parking lot and came back through the parking lot of Shorty's. And I told Dennis, Dennis, wait! Right by this white car I saw on the street. And uh, as I was going to the car, there was a, a car, another car that stopped right in the middle of the road because they saw the cr a cross that Dennis was carrying. And they're like, what's going on? There's two crosses outside. <laughs> they're like, nice to see in probably one cross. They see two crosses. And so it was a two cross night. We had two teams with one cross each. And they said, well, what's going on? <clears throat> I said, we're out here sharing the gospel. And I gave them a, one of our gospel tracks. And uh, they took off, and they were all the way in town from New York City was their place. And so just as that, that stopped, I just turned slightly to the left, uh, north on tower, and this guy jumps out of his car. He's using a vulgar language, but he says, what the F is going on? He says, what, what, no, he said, what, he said, what, what the F are you looking at? And so he says, what are you looking at? And I said, oh, I, didn't, I didn't have time to think. I said, I'm looking at a person who needs to hear the gospel. And something like that just switched in his mind. All of a sudden, he, from being, I thought he was going to want to fight. And when he's coming up, she thought he was going to fight too. And uh, he just came up here, just, he's like, man, I need, there's a cross. I needed to see you. He couldn't, do, he couldn't stop saying, I, I needed this thing. Uh, he, was, he was suicidal. He was uh, depressed. He, he had been drinking a lot. And, and uh, just, just all with that, there was so much that happened with this young man that, um, uh, even with someone on our team, it happened that he knew the guy. I think for over from over five years ago, we hadn't seen him for over five years, but he knew him. And all of that happened because we spent time uh, preaching about the word in Acts 8. We were praying for those things. And uh, a while back, uh, the Lord gave me something that says, what you're praying for is what you're believing for. If you're praying about something, that's what you're believing for. God wants us to continue in prayer. He wants to continue in prayer. So... Um, the more time you spend with someone, uh, the more you'll get to know them. So the more time you, you spend with God, you're going to know what's, what he likes, what he dislikes, and what's on his heart. So I'm going to, I believe there's more we can share about that, but I'm going to go over to um, open-air preaching. Open-air preaching uh, is, is, is all throughout Acts. Uh, but I'm going to kind of put... Um, but there's another word when it says preaching, it also means to proclaim. So uh, not everybody has to be an open-air preacher, but where you're welcome to. But everybody can proclaim in some way, whether it's, uh, again, in your natural course of, of running errands, your natural part of life, or uh, running errands. And, um, um, and that's what happened here in uh, Acts 2. But going back to New Orleans... Uh, I got in, like the first one or two years, and, and I saw people like open air preaching. I'm like, man, that looks like something that I'd want to do, you know. And, and I think we've all been there. It's like maybe uh, it's 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 awesome to, for somebody to see something modeled, right? They're modeling something, uh, whether it's a skill, a gift, uh, a spiritual gift, whether it's prophecy, uh, uh, teaching, music, these different things. And so sometimes it, it takes somebody modeling something. So that can encourage or challenge you to do that as well. And so, uh, and so we went down to New Orleans a couple of years, and, and then we invited another pastor up here to Duluth. And, um, and he started opening up preaching, and people were coming to the cross. And so this is back, um, of, uh, I think it's either 2010 or 2011, somewhere in there. And uh, so we're in Duluth, right across from Grandma's Sports Garden, and I had the people pray for me. And so I started open air preaching for the very first time. And this was in Duluth. And, um, and sure enough, people came right up to the cross. I was like, wow. I was like, wow, this works. God's word going forth. It does something in the atmosphere. People hear it. And it gives them the option and the choice to respond. And before I know it, the, uh, the pastors, kneeling with this guy that came to the cross, they're praying. And so I'm like, I'm like, wow, blown away. So this is a picture of that very first time open air preaching. Um, we'll get the dates on the back of here. So this is open air preaching in Duluth, Minnesota. 
<clears throat> um, Amen. And so it, it's encouraging uh, for others to model something, whether it's prayer. That'll it'll take us to a, another step in our faith to be able to accomplish those things. So open air preaching, I, did, I believe, was is modeled amazingly in Acts 2, uh, 14. And it says here, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, it says he raised his voice and said to them. And so, uh, right here is an example, a model for the church, for God's people, of open air preaching. Uh, right, in, right in the midst of the multitudes of people. <clears throat> And uh, you, can fa you can read this on your own time, but this is, uh, I want to go over to the end of his sermon here, in Acts 2, 36. So he is, you've got to raise your voice for what's, what we're going to read here, for people in that big a crowd to, to hear what's going on. <clears throat> so it says here in verse 36, it says at the end of his, uh, kind of at the end of his open air preaching, the end of his message, it says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know or surely that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, right, they heard all these things. Here's this, this is some of the response of the people. They were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter responds. Peter said to them, Repent. That's the message that Jesus shared. That's the message that John shared. John the Baptist is the message that the disciples and the apostles started with, and it continues. This is the crux, the importance of the gospel, is for people to repent. And then it says, And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And then it says here in verses 40 and 41, And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word, see, some, some receive, some don't receive, and some receive his word. But here it says, Those who gladly received his word, were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were saved and added to them. That, that, is a, that, that is the influx of people to the church. You know, from 12 to 120 approximately that were, that were praying, that were, that were seeking the Lord's face, then the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them, and then Peter starts preaching, and then everybody else gets involved in discipleship, prayer, and it says that 3,000 souls were added to them. And it says they continued uh, steadfastly in the apostles' uh, doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayers. And um, down here, 46 and 47. And so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, so there's, a, there's unity, there's fellowship, they're eating together, uh, and with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. It says here another, another key verse, and the Lord added to the church daily, the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. The Lord wants to add to His church daily. He wants, the Lord wants people to come to uh, a saving knowledge of faith and truth and come into the kingdom uh, and it's so important to the Lord for us uh, to get out of our comfort zone, to be uncomfortable, to pray for that boldness, to, to break off uh, the fear of man, and, and just to, to go forward. Um, Acts 4. Acts 4 here, let's see. Uh, it says here in Acts 4, I think, uh, yep, 27 through 31, yeah. This is our first closing. And then, uh, all right, Acts 4, 27, it says, For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, 
look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And it's another great verse that says, and when they had prayed, so this is another example of, 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 of a church and a people that is praying. It's so important to be praying. When they had prayed, the place they were assembled together, it says, was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were uh, spoke the word of God with boldness. They spoke that word with boldness because it's not by uh, our might, but by our, uh, or even by our power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. Man, I remember when I was a Christian. I was a Christian for sure, but then I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and God brought me this, this joy, brought me this boldness into my life. <clears throat> and I want to close with a quote from uh, Oswald J. Smith. that says, The church that does not evangelize will fossilize. The church that does not evangelize will fossilize. God wants His church to continue to grow, continue to expand, uh, and, and his word here in Acts, it says there was 3,000, and then it continued to add daily. It added daily to the church. And another verse here, found in uh, Acts 5, to kind of just go right with that as we close for this part of it. Um, Acts 5, 13 and 14. It says, Yet none of the rest dared to join them, but the people esteemed them highly. Talking about the church and the the sold out believers, verse 14, and believers were increasingly added to the Lord. Multitudes of both men and women. And, and look what's happening. Uh, again here in verse 15 and 16, it says, So that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities in Jerusalem bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed in my Bible. They were all healed. So they were walking in uh, the Word, but also in a demonstration. God wants His Word to go forth, but also a demonstration of the power. Thank you so much, Father God, for this time together. Lord God, we thank you for your Word. I pray that your Word will continue to be precious to us, that we will continue to cherish your Word. And that we will continue, Lord God, to, um, uh, Lord God, continue to uh, make and create time, Lord God, to spend time with you, Lord God. That would continue to be a priority, uh, even amongst life's busyness and amongst, uh, 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 amongst the busyness of life, that we would make it a priority to spend time with you in prayer, Lord God, and also with other believers, other believers in prayer, and to see your power uh, demonstrated in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.